<clears throat> ha. I'm a slightly above casual consumer of history, and I also do some woodworking. I recently stumbled upon a video on YouTube showcasing furniture from the site of Herculaneum. 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 Herculaneum was buried alongside the city of Pompeii when Vesuvius erupted in the year 79. It's a very famous historical event and it's been a treasure trove of archaeological finds. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and replicate one of those discoveries. I live in Sweden. This is the place I go to buy the materials I need. This brush is gonna be useful later on. The legs, frame and stretchers of the table are going to be made out of common pine wood. For the tabletop I'm going to use some sapelli that I had in my workshop. It's rough lumber so I have to resaw. By using my plunge saw I cut it to be 30 centimeters wide. This is to make it fit through my planer. This planer saves me a lot of time, even when I take many small passes. Good. Using some scrap wood I'm making a platform. I can glue the geometric patterns on it. I'm using my table saw to cut the sapelli wood into very thin planks and off camera I take the planks through the planer. This is a drawing of the approximate shape and size of one fourth of the pattern. I cut the parts for one corner, then I just replicated three more times. Now we can finally see the tessellation. By gluing a couple of strips in two corners as a sort of frame, I'm making sure they will keep the pattern straight and 90 degrees. As we wait, I turn my attention to the frames and the legs. I make sure to cut the legs square using the table saw. This is the router and the round over bit, so I can make the legs less sharp. And here comes the brush I bought earlier. It's a metal brush and I'm using it to scrub away some of the soft fibers of the wood. 
off camera I cut the platform into a square shape. Then I went ahead and sanded the pattern before applying some wood filler. This was needed in some places because I sadly don't have the most precise machines in my workshop. Now going back to the legs, I'm using this simple jig to drill holes for dowels. By doing it like this, I made it a bit more complicated than necessary, but the goal was to make two of each type of leg so they can be mirrors of each other, if that makes sense. As soon as I have the dowels in one pair of legs, I'm pushing them together to make an imprint so I know exactly where to drill to make the legs match up when I put the frames together. To be clear, by frames I mean stretchers. Here I paint the dowels so I can press the stretchers together and then get accurate drill holes. It's time to color the wood and I'm using a dark wood stain to give it the look I want. And uh, just uh, don't do it like I'm doing it, please. This is the bottom of the platform getting painted. The legs are now glued and ready to be put together. Wow! Now after sanding away the wood filler comes for me one of the most enjoyable parts. We finally get to see the color of the hardwood. I'm using a mixture of two chemicals as wood finish. I'm not exactly sure what the English name is for these two but I'm guessing it's kind of similar to the Swedish being shown here. Cook linseed oil and balsam turpentine maybe i'm using a 50 50 mix for this one but i'll have to tell you be careful put on some breathing protection some gloves open windows and doors i let the wood soak it up for like half an hour then i wipe it off then i scrub the surface hard with a towel so the oil gets into all the pores then i let it dry for 24 hours and repeat the process one more time we need some frames for the tabletop and as a happy coincidence the router bit that cuts the exact shape we need is very appropriately made You can see the shape I'm trying to emulate and also the geometric pattern is raised slightly above which is a perfect fit with the wood I just routed and all I need to do is adjust the width. After painting the frames I use the same method I used earlier with the dowels. I mark the screws with my pen and then I press them towards the platform. This left an imprint where I could then drill accurately. Okay. Now remember that brush we used earlier? This is what I wanted it to do. Since the table was found in a charred state, I thought it would be cool to paint it black and make it look like it's burnt. I did say I wanted to replicate the table, but I didn't like the placement of the legs, so I hope you can forgive me for moving them more inwards. A tiny aesthetic choice. This was of course made to be sold, so send me a message if you're interested. It's almost complete, and this is one of my favorite builds. I can honestly say that I am proud. If you liked it, subscribe, 
or take a look at my Instagram account. I create some goofy stuff. I also had some spare parts, so I made a kind of matching bedside table. 